Welcome to Weld.com. Viewer response, everybody's asking about material prep. Okay, so we simply want to go through and take some different types of materials that we would get just raw. Okay, obviously this is raw. This piece of plain carbon steel that we got from outside and it's got a lot of rust on it. And then we would take a piece of carbon steel that is new and everybody thinks, well, that's clean steel. Well, we're going to show you what happens. Uh, we're going to weld with each of these with a TIG process. And by the way, I'm going to use an, an Everlast 200 DV and I'm using it on the 110 volt side. I've never, I've, as much as we've run all these Everlast machines, I don't think I remember doing one on the 110 volt side. So I want to do that and just, we just want to strike some beads on here, run, uh, strike an arc, run a little bit of a bead just to kind of show you the reaction of what's going to happen on dirty material, how to clean it properly. Uh, and then uh, we've got a piece of stainless steel over here as well. So let me get my safety glasses. I'll be right back. Welcome back. I am going to take and clean, properly clean parts of these so that I can weld on them. I intend to weld on, on the unprepared part and then I'm going to weld on the clean part. Obviously, I'm going to go through a few tungstens. We're going to do this in TIG and we're going to discuss a little bit about different welding processes. So the first thing I need to do, I want to properly clamp my material. I need to be mindful of where I'm going to be uh, shooting my sparks off toward the camera guy, one of them. We've got a camera guy and a camera girl today. How about that? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I'm going to be using a Walter and I'm going to be a Walter grinder and I'm going to be using a quarter of an inch disc on here and I'm just going to lightly flat sand this a little bit to cut down through this rust. I have an Arc 1 safety shield that I like a lot. It is dual purpose. I like having this on here so I don't need to reach for my dark shield or my glasses if I do some cutting. I like having a face shield on when I'm oxyacetylene cutting a lot of times because mill scale will pop up off of here and and uh, <clears throat> so my face shield, I normally do not wear hearing protection when I'm in the shop and I'm just doing a, a little bit of a light grind. And we use the foam pads. I like to have the permanent uh, ear protection like when I'm running my chainsaw. And I know some of you have commented that I'm deaf and old and fat and ugly and everything else. That's all fine. I do wear these folks, I really do, but I just, I don't do it if I'm just doing a little bit of grinding. I have a lot of people that talk to me during the day in my classes, and I also kind of need to hear what's going on in other parts of the shop, and when I'm wearing these, I have a hard time hearing everything in the shop, so, but I do wear them, and it's a good idea. It is a real good idea if you're grinding on a vessel, or you're preparing something that's going to, that reverb going to add to that the decibels it gets really loud and hearing protection is a really good idea. Again, I wear the permanent, uh, oh, they're, they're like on a, a neck band. And I'll put those, especially when I'm running something like my saw or I'm grinding on a tank or something like that. So I do wear hearing protection. I just won't do it today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, this is just completely rusty. I hope the camera can zoom in here and see this. I'm gonna clean a little bit of this off and get down through this rust and get down into some good clean steel. Okay, from really rusty down to clean metal. I kept a fairly light pressure. I kind of floated a lot of this stuff off and then I came back in and, and tried to hold it pretty flat. I personally wouldn't go into this with a flapper disc. Flapper discs are really cool. Um, they're versatile, they can do a lot of different things by grinding stock off. Me personally, I just don't like grinding rust with them and I don't like grinding over mill scale to cut it off. I like to first cut it off with a grinding wheel. It's a little more aggressive. I can get down into it and then I can sand and finish it a little bit. It's just the way I use mine. So there's the rusty piece of carbon steel. We'll do the same thing with 
what we would consider new steel, but it has mill scale on it. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't take very long. And I have had people send me pictures wanting to know why their TIG welds look really crusty and bad and dark and porosity and stuff like that. And they're not even cleaning the steel. And I've, I'm going, wow, you know, do yourself a favor. Big difference between this, they're welding over the top of this and we're gonna show you the effects of that versus this. It doesn't take very long. Another method for cleaning carbon steels and I've done this recently in some coursework where we've gone from running multiple beads on a flat pad to simple fillet welds and lap welds, <clears throat> a wire wheel, and we'll even take it over to the bead blaster to get some of the crust off. After we make a weld, we get some mill scale that appears on the back side of a fillet weld. That needs to be cleaned as well. So here we have a piece of aluminum and we see this kind of a crusty looking watermark and it creates a different pattern on this side over here where even this looks nice and clean you know obviously through discoloration we get some weird looking brown haze on here you know maybe this was outside and uh, and watermark or whatever this side is really bad so how do we clean aluminum the first thing that I always take into consideration is I don't, you know, the proper ways of cleaning aluminum for, for welding, grinding, filing, uh, you can do a chemical etch, hand wire brush. And everybody's thinking, well, that's, you know, a hand wire brush, why don't I just grab a, a knotted wire wheel on a grinder and clean it off? What you're actually doing, since this is so high speed and the aluminum is soft, you're just impregnating that, that layer back down into the material. When you go welding on it, you see all these black specks of pepper floating up through. That's, you've kind of contaminated your own piece here. You're not really cleaning it. You can take, I have in the past, uh, I have taken a flapper wheel, lightly sand, and then I usually hand brush with a stainless or brass toothbrush looking affair to get the oxide layer off. There are times when I will use a mill file. It depends on the part and it depends on the joint configuration. This being flat, I'd be real interested in changing this out to a, a, a flapper wheel. Again, I like to go into them real light because I don't want to dig into them and impregnate that oxide layer or any of that nasty surface and get that back down into the aluminum. I don't know if you could hear that or not. A lot, I'm, I was trying to take and make cuts and progressively go left to right. And then I would take a uh, hand brush go across this in a couple of different directions. From there, we can go scotch bright if we need to. Beyond that, we can go acetone wipes. Um, you know, again, this all depends on what this part's gonna be used for. But just to get this major oxide layer off, any dirt, I don't know what this is. It's a watermark or something but it's pretty crusty and i'm pretty sure you can see that on the camera as well so difference between filthy and 
you know, we cleaned this off and got this prepped for, for good weld. Stainless steel. What do we do to clean stainless steel? <clears throat> I personally will check the condition of this. One side of this has some uh, rust spec, looks like mild weld spatter, scratches. You know, again, what is the part going to be used for? Are you going to take the weld off afterwards or you want to prep it clean, leave the weld behind? First thing I do is, is check condition. Um, really, you know, there's a lot of times I don't do anything to it. I'll just wipe it off free of dust and oil and dirt and stuff like that and I leave it alone. However, if I do need to clean it with anything mechanical like a knotted wire wheel or a flapper disc, then I am dedicating that flapper disc and that wire wheel. I need a stainless wire wheel. I dedicate those to stainless. I'll paint mine red so that when I take them off and put them back in my toolbox, then I know what they were used for and I don't mix them over from carbon steel and aluminum and stainless. I don't mix all that up. I keep a dedicated set of abrasives for stainless steel and I color code mine with red. That's just the way I've always done it. So I realized that I just got through grinding on some aluminum with this flapper disc, but I'm going to touch this just to show surface condition, what it does to it. Now there are other options for abrasives. <clears throat> there are options of, of sanding discs on die grinders, uh, the, like the buffing wheels, and then they come in a variety of grits. But just between normal surface condition of what you would get from factory, and this side has been sanded slightly. And we have some sanding marks in it. Again, you know, you need to assess what condition that you need to prep this for and then how you're going to finish it after your part is done. So that's a good demonstration on how to properly clean material. Proper tools, proper safety gear, eyeglasses. I, I use mine with the side shields quite a bit. Earplugs if you need them. Uh, you know, again, we, we need to do everything possible that we can so that we can get a good clean welds. Take the mill scale off. Uh, take the oxide layer off of aluminum, uh, take the rust off of carbon steel, those, you know, those things we need to do. I hope this helps. In part two, we're going to weld over some of the bad parts and some of the clean parts. So stay tuned for that.